All right, hello everybody. I wanted to do a quick tutorial on adding collision to an uh, asset. So here we have this boulder right here. Collision can be kind of frustrating getting it to work and troubleshooting in CryEngine. So the very first thing that you should ch uh, check out over here on this display panel, the little computer monitor, there is an option under profile options called show proxy. So right now we can see the only collision we have in this scene is on the trees, just a simple uh, cube collision. Um, something like a tree, just a basic cube is all you would really need. This boulder, we might want it to be a little more complex and go, or go with the forms here. So the first thing we want to do is set up the material in CryEngine. So this rock already has a basic uh, material. So let's take a look at it. We can bring up our material editor by pressing M, select the rock, and use this third option, which is a get properties from selection. And we see down here, here's our material. Now, we need to change this to a multi-subobject material. So we can right click. Um, actually, what we'll do, we need to create a new material. So I can right click down here and add new multi-material. I need to navigate to where that boulder is. So boulder demo 04. It's very important that your material is in the same uh, folder as everything else, your max file, because that connection needs to be um, live. It needs to go back and forth when you sync materials from CryEngine to max. So I'm gonna um, boulder 04, I'll call it multi, just so we know this material is different. And save it. So we should see that we have two materials in the same directory. Now that's not ideal. We um, It can create problems uh, with the materials. So we'll eventually get rid of the boulder 04, which is the original. But first we can copy over those settings. So we could right click the new material, set number of submaterials. Now we want two. One for our main uh, material we already have. And then the second is a collision material and once that material is applied to geometry, it'll know um, to, to act with the physics and the player interaction. So I change this to two. Now we can expand this. And there's a, a kind of a weird trick. You can copy and paste materials. So we can copy what we have here and click this and paste. And the weird, weird part is you when the save as dialog comes up, you just cancel that. And you'll see uh, my material came through still. So these are all the settings I had already done. We didn't really lose any of that work. So I'll, I'll just name this um, rock. And then I'll right click the next one and we'll rename this collision or Kaleida for whatever reason people call it Kaleida. The naming is not important. It's not going to affect the asset. So now we have this new material layout. We need to sync this over to Max. Um, and I'll just, on the Kaleida, I'm going to make a real bright, obnoxious color so you can see that even these settings will come over. Nothing else is set here. So to sync this to Max, we need to select the top level of this multi material. And I can also delete this material now. So we want to have this folder real clean, just one material uh, per Max file. Then we hop over to Max, bring up our material editor here, also with M. And I'm going to select just an empty material ball that's not being used. I can tell it's not being used because we don't have any triangles here in the corner. Jump over to our Utilities tab into the CryEngine exporter and expand, or actually the Material tab here. We just want a Sync Material button. This takes it from CryEngine and brings it over to Max and say yes to both those options. Now here we go, I can name, um, well, the name here is fine. So notice that's the same name that we did in CryEngine, so that came through. And we do need to apply the material to our rock. Now I don't really, I never really worry about how it looks in Max, that's not important. We don't, there's no need like adding more textures or tweaking the lighting here. As long as you can see the UVs, that's all you really need. 
So that's material ID one, it's already assigned correctly. But now we wanna add a collision. So what I recommend doing, um, the collision needs to share the same pivot point as the main object. So the best way to do that is you can just take this object and hit control V, which is the clone. That'll clone it right in the, its exact location. We'll make it a copy and I'll call this Kaleida. So now I can hide, I can just uh, hide unselected. So now we just have this in our scene for a second. We can work on it isolated. And this material still applied, but we need ID two. So I can select all the polys, go to polygon mode, hit control A and set ID to two and hit enter. So now our collision material is there. And this would probably work as is, even though it's kind of, um, you know, there's a lot of geo for the collision. It could be much more simplified. So for the collision to actually work, we need to go into the material and ch check physicalize. So that makes it interactable with the player and you know the physics in the game if you turn enable that. But you also need physical proxy no draw. And the weird thing is um, there it might be found somewhere, but these options I found need to be set in max for it to work correctly. So we want to do all our material definition and spec and gloss changes and loading textures within CryEngine, but for the actual collision I want to come here and turn that on. Now, the an another issue with that is if you if you're syncing from CryEngine back to Max a lot, you want to double check and make sure these keep getting turned on. Um, it might you might only have to do it once, but just to be safe, uh, make sure those are checked whenever you do the sync material. So now, the next step is we want to optimize this. So I un unhid the regular rock so we can see how close it is to the actual form. Under the modifier stack, we can use Pro Optimize. And first you click Calculate. It's a pretty quick calculation there. And then we just drag the vertex percentage way down. And we're gonna get pretty aggressive with this. Pretty much, we just wanna worry about the main silhouette edges being hit. Probably even go more. So right now we're up we're less than 10% of the original vertex count, and that seems pretty good. Remember, it's a first-person shooter, so you're not, even though you know it's not perfectly accurate, you're not seeing your like feet on the rock or your body interacting with it. As long as you're not clipping into the rock, then it's fine. And if it is clipping, then you'd probably just expand the collision a little bit. So I can convert to edit poly to get out of Pro Optimizer. And now the last thing we need to do is link the collision to the um, rock object. So we can use select and link up at the top left, drag from the collision and release on the rock object. I can hit Q to go into select and then we can W to move. We wanna just select the main rock and move up or down just to test that the collision's linked. And it is. So then we go to the exporter tab again, and under geometry export, it's like we need to re-add our boulder 04, so I add selected. Notice I don't need to add the collision, just the rock. The collision will still export with it. Uh, and the most important thing is the pivot points are lined up, otherwise the registration will be off uh, on the collision. That's the biggest one of the biggest problems I see people have. So now we can just hit export nodes, overwrite yes. And we'll see in here. Um, so a lot of times you need to restart. Let's try reloading our, our brushes, that might work. Yeah, so we'll save this. That's the biggest kind of annoyance with the collision is it's not gonna update right away. So sometimes you need to save your file, reopen, and if you don't know how to visualize the proxy, then it's really hard to troubleshoot any problems because you don't know if it's updated or if the registration's off. So hopefully this works now. 
All right. So there's our proxy. You could go Control G and jump into the level. We're interacting with it. You can see if, if you get any bad clipping, you can pull those collision areas out. So for instance, I think this spot here, you obviously don't want your gun to be poking in, so we can kind of do a pass around and see where the problem areas are. Hop back into max. Uh, one good way, well obviously we can just scale it up. Uh, that might work enough, but you could also try doing a push modifier that pushes on the normal direction, so it's more like an inflate, which would be a good way to handle um, you know, the, some of the clipping problems. And lastly, from there, we can manually you know, select some of these polys, pull them out, just do some, some modeling touch-up if, if you're running into those issues. I mean, most games have areas where you're clipping in, it's not the end of the world, but it if you can fix it, you might as well. And export again, and let's just double check and see if our new changes came through. Yeah, so that's the biggest issue, is just getting it to update. So we could try reload geometry might do something. Uh, I get an error. Okay, well, it works. Just have to restart. Um, when you make changes, just restart CryEngine and use the show proxy. So I hope that helps. I know it's frustrated a lot of you. It's not as straightforward as it uh, probably should be. And remember, whenever you make updates to your material, go to max and make sure the physicalize and show. Uh, and um, physical proxy no draw are checked in the material.